Good evening, good evening, good evening. Uh, looks like we are good to go on my end. It's always like a last minute uh, find if we are or aren't. I have volume streaming out on my end, so we should be good to go. Uh, there is a topic on today's uh, show here. I've had a lot of questions and comments on one specific issue. Uh, we'll shoot that out in just a few minutes here. Uh, for those in Patreon, I pretty much answered every single thing in any of the posts or items as well. I responded. There was quite a few. I asked some more questions to help uh, give you a better price on some things. There will be another video up for YouTube membership and Patreon this weekend. Maybe two. I'm still... We're up in the air on um, with the rescue dog. We may be still spending some time at the the the, the uh, rescue place. I'm not really sure as of yet. I've posted uh, a couple quick videos to a few folks of the dog that we're adopting. Um, and it just takes some time. She's skittish. She was in the same situation as Jack. And long story short, so if, if I can get it in there arranged, I'll probably post it by Saturday afternoon for a Sunday live show just for Patreon. Um, and then there'll be another follow-up one just for YouTube. It may not be on Sunday for the YouTube membership, but it will be within the next week. Um, I'll be able to allow other people to come in and you can show me stuff for those in Patreon. And it'll be a hopefully a work fine. If it doesn't the first time, please bear with it because I'm doing the best I can. It runs fine on um, like when the wife dials in on another account and we've checked it. I just can't say for sure when it's feeding in from five different sources into a, a private live show what's going to happen so anyway i know i've talked about it but i'm going to run it if it goes it goes and, and hopefully it does cross my fingers if it doesn't well we'll try it again and see what happens uh anyway so there will be those up i do have another video already shot for well the patreon shot but there'll be two um story views the youtube video is shot too and i'm looking at some of the items we're going to look at some christmas items some haul items in a video for youtube coming up um, some unique stuff, some interesting stuff, probably stuff that most of you probably haven't seen or just may not realize there's that kind of value in stuff. So that's going to be the video coming up tomorrow on um, YouTube here. And I have a couple of shorts. I just posted a short just before the show on some other items that were trickling in here into our inventory. Um, we're flush with inventory right now. So I don't know what everybody else's situation is, but I buy it in the summer when it's really cheap. And this summer, honestly, I, I really didn't have to buy much because we're still backed up from last summer and a couple of massive hauls and some paper items. Um, those in Patreon, you've seen 5% in those two real long paper haul videos. There's two of those, um, maybe 5% of what we got. And just that one pick, we're, we're, I'm flush. I've got it. Every shelf now has stacks of stuff sitting on top of all the bins and the totes and everything because I have, you know, no other way to sort it because it's just so massive. But we're going to start showing some of that here. Today's topic, before we go any farther, let's just talk about the topic at hand and then I'll try and get to some questions and go through a much quicker I'll try to because I do get a lot of complaints. I don't get to the questions. Um, 99 cent items. I know everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't, you haven't been on eBay for a ton of time, I would say, because 99 cent items drive people crazy for many, many different reasons. Sometimes there's 99 cent items here in the U.S. Sometimes they're free shipping if they're small, small paper or a sticker or something like that. There's people that just make a living selling stickers, whether it be local or, or um, you know, uh, online. I've sold stickers for years. You know, honestly, we've sold stickers for like 30 years, maybe maybe more like 35 even. I've sold stickers since I was a little kid with the Star Wars cards, and I've always messed with those. But, um, you know, so I just lost my train of thought. I just saw something pop up. But anyway, 99 cent sales. Now, I get people complaining that if they're from China that, you know, it's some scam and this and that. For China, they're using their system that they have. If our post office was $0.29 cents to, to ship a $10 or $0.10 cent item and we could still make a profit at $0.99, cents, you know, and it was a volume sale, it could work for somebody here as well. Obviously, it doesn't. It's a somewhat of an unfair advantage. Again, they've got a different structure. The countries are all involved in the, the international postal, whatever it's called. I know there's an organization that they're all part of. They agreed to it and on and on and on. Here in the U.S., I see 99-cent sales all the time. 
And every time if I'm talking to somebody and those are brought up, it always comes down to it's a scam, it's a bait and switch or something like that. There's a lot simpler answer to that question. And one that I've personally told people to use a similar or even that option if they have the choice. Let's say you've had a, a negative feedback. Somebody dinged you, nothing you can do. eBay won't re remove it because it went through, there was no return opened. They just left the feedback and never contacted you. I know a lot of you probably have had that happen. We've had it happen in the past before too. Now, if you don't have a lot of feedback and you've only sold you know, unlimited a few hundred items, it may take you a while to get rid of that because it may, one bad feedback could drop your 100% feedback Again, depending on how many items you're selling, down to like 96, 99.6, 98.2. There's a wide gap depending on how many items you sell. And to remove that gap and get that feedback where it's almost invisible in a very short period of time, the quickest way to do it is to sell a whole bunch of really dirt cheap items, legit items. Don't be trying to scam anybody. Blow out the junk that you don't, you don't want to mess with or whatever, just to do it. Bust up a whole bunch of quick sell, really, really, really cheap, so cheap that they will sell quick, and get some good feedback from those. The only way to wash out negative feedback in a quick period of time, and, and especially for those folks who may be, be below standards and are now paying more in fees, again, that's how e eBay works. You get dinged for not following the procedures. You keep doing it. Eventually, you're going to be below standard because of your feedback rating, the internal justification system whatever they're using in there which i don't personally have a problem with you should follow the rules if i do something wrong i've taken the hit and moved on from there but the the feedback from a whole bunch of really cheap decent items is going to wash that out you'll see your feedback percentage rise extremely quick if you're a slow seller because of maybe what you're selling and you blow a whole bunch of items out for really really cheap it works. I, I, I promise you. I've told I don't know how many people for probably the last 10 years that that's the easiest way. If eBay's not going to remove it, if you've got no case, if it, a return wasn't opened, and all that kind of stuff. Most, if, if you know how the system works, most of the feedbacks that you have left, as long as they you know are, are breaking a rule in some way, shape, or form, you can have removed. They'll even, in the past, do a courtesy you know, they'll, they'll side with you for something, you know, like that. And you can get it removed in some cases as well. Obviously, if you do it all the time, it's not going to wash. It's like a one-time thing or I, I don't know the frequency. But they've personally went and that's what they said. Even though I was in the right, that's how they staged it. Either way, we'd give you a courtesy and blah, blah, blah. You know, they, they read over our account or whatever the heck they do. I don't know what they technically do. Never ask, don't really care. So 99 cents never, ever scare me when I see stuff on there. I don't think someone's trying to necessarily undercut me. Look at their feedback when you see that sometimes, and you'll notice sometimes that there's a feedback issue. It's been a practice with long old timers, OG, whatever you want to call the resellers like us that have been around for a very long time. It's something people have used forever. It's not a secret in my world or anything else like that. I, I'm happy to tell anybody that's the easiest way to do it because you're going to run into some that you can't fight. And if you're selling at a certain pace, it takes so long, especially if you get a second one for something, if you've got a couple of uh, negative feedbacks. Again, that's going to take your percentage down and down and down. So flood it with a whole bunch of good feedbacks from 99 cent items, $1.99 items, something that's going to sell quick. And, and that's the take on it. Now, there's a couple other reasons why 99 cent sales are okay and they shouldn't scare you. I'm not saying to do them. I'm not saying to do them. That's, that's your call. But these are why people do them. We're going to give you the reasons why, I guess I should say today. So another reason, in, and then I've heard this, and this comes back to um, bait and switch, why I hear bait and switch when we talk about stuff like this. I run into people in public. I talk to people on the phone and stuff that I've been you know, friends with for years, you know, decades. So um, these are conversations. I'm not going to shout out any names. They might be in the house now. So it's, it's none of my, my business to, to call it a name. But, um, well, thank you, Auction Monkey. I, I honestly and sincerely do appreciate that. Good to have you on for sure. Thank you. Thank you very kindly on that. You're welcome to shoot out a question when, when you put one of those or something like that. Not trying to, you know, scam on anybody, but I do appreciate that very, very kindly. Um, I, I lost my train of thought. Where were we? Oh, okay. Back to um, 99 cents once again. For like bait and switch. 
if you list like let's say you got a bunch of really mid mid range price 40 to 50 range 40 to 60 range items up a decent amount of them and stuff like that and you know there might maybe a little competition you've got maybe not the best items in that that range price range but you know they're they're decent a lot of people will run 99 cent really cheap items to, to draw the people in there's good there's bad with that so, like for my personal um view on it we, we do sometimes really cheap uh things but we only do them on a sale we run them once and then if they haven't sold they go in a lot and they just get relisted as a different a different type of listing i guess versus a singles into one big lot when i can't sell stuff individually and it comes down to i'm just tired of looking at it or they've been beat up in storage for a decade i just throw them in a lot at the end of the day like to like items and blow them out in lots and they almost always sell fairly decently and fairly quickly when we do that so that's that's been a thing but a lot of people will mix in dirt cheap 99 cent items legit buy it now 99 cents you know uh envelope item something you can throw in an envelope it doesn't have to be postcards. It could be anything, patches or whatever you can fit in, in a cheap envelope that you can mail. It has to be so thin because otherwise if it's over there, you'll pay the the um, uh, thick add-on fee from the post office. If you're unaware of that, please look it up. Um, so that's another reason why people do 99 cents, to bring people in. They do it as an advertising feature. It, it's legit you know I, I can say we've tried it in the past for what we sell doesn't work if you're selling something that's a household item that people are gonna need you know over and over again like um, uh, disposable razors you know I pick them up if they're dirt cheap in a big case or whatever at an auction or something like that I know a lot of people buy that kind of stuff it's not a huge high dollar market but you sell a bunch of them you know, and, and as long as you properly have a, a way, we wrap cardboard around a pack and it's just a, a flap from a cardboard box, just like I wrap postcards and same basic principle. If you're curious, just popping in a poly, a six by nine poly fix fits one of those and you can ship them out fairly cheaply. So stuff like that goes extremely well to, to draw some attention to your store, get new people in there and hope they'll like your store because you're selling some range of stuff. It works for some items, just like promoted listings works for some items. Some items, it won't work at all. You know, it, it's just, it's just, I guess, dependent on the categories you're selling in. I get asked all the time, hey, my store is not doing great. I can't get past this level and things like that. And, and you know, it, it's something that it's going to plague everybody at some point in their career. Once you get past that, usually you, you'll see where the bottleneck is and you'll be able to fix it the next time yourself. Nothing wrong with, with asking for help on that. But that's, again, another one of those, those issues tied to stuff like this. Advertising to draw business. And I don't think that's bait and switch unless you're doing it as a variation where one item's 99 cents and that's the item that's pushed versus, uh, you know, like an average $50 item in that same variation. People used to do do that religiously. I, I used to see it all the time, depending on how eBay would promote it or Amazon or whatever site you're actually selling on. Because we're not just talking about specifically eBay. You can do the same basic principle, 99 cent item on Amazon, 495 or whatever your, your first class postage setup is for an Amazon. You set it up yourself, so I can't say what your postage is on an Amazon. We've got several different postage uh, policies on Amazon, as most people probably do, based on the item, based on where we can ship them, whether some of our items are blocked from going overseas. I'm sure a lot of folks know what I'm talking about. You don't send adult material. You can still sell pinup magazines on eBay, but you can't send them in certain countries. I can sell some World War II items across the, the seas, but I can't sell them in Germany if they're German and on and on and on. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff like that. Everybody needs to know if you're going to mess with international shipping. We don't ship to Germany anymore because of their policy. But, you know, anyway, uh, it just wasn't worth all the hassle. Uh, there, there's a, another reason, obviously, for 99 cent sales. Yeah, sure, some of them could be scammers. But in, in all honesty, if you look at a bunch of 99 cent listings, you're going to see that the majority of them are, are people doing one of the first two things I talked about, trying to fix feedback or trying to use it as an advertising ploy to get people in. Now, if you're using it as an advertising ploy, 99 cents purchase items, again, that's the you know bin price, 99 cent, no offer, 
buy it out the door or dollar ninety nine. It's usually that ninety nine cent or it has you know ninety nine cent in the figure and it's it's a cheapo item, not quality cheap, but just you can blow it out. Let's say you bought a case of puffy stickers and, and you have 10 cents a piece into them you can literally sell them for 99 cents if it's something that can go in an envelope hallmark stickers let's say if you, you got a you bought out the, the clearance at a hallmark we we've done that it's not some oddball thing i've had multiple opportunities i've maybe not had multiple opportunities where i had the space to store 50 cases of unknown paper items from a store like that but anyway that's the point you could even make money selling a 99 cent item in an envelope for a dollar shipping or whatever the case may be you know it, it's always an option you won't get top rated seller plus because you won't have tracking on that so just something else to think about so there, there are multiple ways to to do that i know people who do volume it, i mean they sell a lot of money ten thousand possibly on a weekend you know every weekend so I, these are real numbers i'm not giving you some line but they sell cheap items the majority i mean I want to say it's between three and six dollars is the majority, like 80 percent of every single thing they sell is between three and six dollars profit, you know, and that's an insanely low amount. But the volume, you know, they're replenishables and things. Stickers, again, would be a perfect example. You buy a case of stickers. I can probably go down at least once or twice a month and buy a, at least a case of vintage 90 stickers if I really wanted to panini or whatever the brand name is i can't remember the name but they're they're international ones and stuff i see them all the time i've seen some ninja turtles not too long ago garbage pail kids i mean again all of that kind of stuff football cards you know this is the cheapos 99 cent those will fix your feedback those can also draw some business and depending on what you're selling if you're a car dealer running a 99 cent price with you know uh the envelope rate i don't do envelope again but it's it's a full-fledged option and and I probably the the results on those ninety nine cent sales you wouldn't make as many of them unless you use the envelope right. Just again to be honest with you, uh, so those are all options. Those will do something to bring people in. Again, if you sell cards, it's a draw to get people in to see your cards. But if you're selling vintage action figures, and then you're running ninety nine cent sales on cards that have nothing to do with it, your main line of business, it's not going to get you much business. If the item is not related to what you mostly sell, why would it get you much business other than just wasting your time with the 99 cent items? If you're not making a profit on them, it wouldn't be worth the while, in my opinion. There's other ways to, to get people in. Another drawback on running 99 cent items to draw people into your store, in my mind, is you know, you're know you like selling low-end items, but you're trying to be a high-end dealer. And you'll run into it like if you're out in an antiques uh, store like a store not necessarily a mall i mean they got a whole bunch of just junky stuff cluttered all over you're going to be questioning the rest of the stuff they're selling is it quality enough why do they got these cheapo junk things in the front and on and on and on like that i'm not a 99 cent buy type of person truthfully um i unless it's you know something to resell different story i'm not going to go to a store and worry about 99 cent i'm just going to look at something i like and I'll then go by what the price is after that i don't look by price at anything really and obviously if i can get it cheaper i will but that's not how i shop so i mean that's a good way uh, again to draw some business in depending on what you sell as well as to fix your feedback again chinese items or india or wherever they're from i'm not trying to be political and correct on that i'm just it, it's usually what i see the countries they're from that can do it because of the the postal regulations and fees in their country any country any country that has those low of a fees will have a, a an edge over even someone in this country if they can sell products that cheap so you know i that that's where i draw a line on you know that's like um working the markets you know it, it, almost on an illegal basis but i know we signed the deal so nothing we can do uh let's pop and see if there's any comments or questions um yeah for i see a couple of comments on that if you're going to do that you need to get it where it's going to sell you don't want to just chop it down and worry about i'm going to lose a couple dollars i would rather have my account in good standing and not make as much money personally i would rather give up a few dollars i would rather just sell it at a 10 20 cent loss even a dollar loss, if I've got to spend $50 to get my, my feedback back in range, I would do it. So if you lose a dollar an item, I, I personally wouldn't have an issue with it. 
this quick 50 in there might raise it back up to 99.9. It's going to round off and show 100, even though you still have a negative. I, I mean, it's happened to us once before, and I've seen it on other accounts too. So even if you have one with the way it, it rounds up or rounds down, you know, based on, you know, the, how you round, that it might still show 100 feedback, 100% that is. So, I mean, that's just something to think about. I don't, I try to, again, I don't, money isn't always the, 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 the biggest assumption on this. The, the, the best thing for me is making sure your feedback's good and that you're not getting in trouble with eBay for something stupid. You're spending too long to ship your items is one of the biggest ones I hear from people that I got dinged. eBay sent me a, a basically a, a notice and, you know, my, my accounts could be restricted if it happens again because they were holding items or not shipping. They quoted, I'm going to ship within 48 hours and then we're taking, you know, 50, 60 hours to do it. If you're running late, print the darn labels up before the deadline. And then print up your, your scan, master scan sheet if that's what you are using. If you do it from Pirate Ship, you can, you can print up everything ahead of time as well. So print it up before the deadline. The post office, as long as they scan it, I, there's so many hours or a day or two days or something. As long as the post office scans it, I, I swear it's two days, but I could be wrong. Maybe somebody will know. I'll, I'll remember to look it up and bring that up and make a post on, on, on some of my pages. But I swear it's like two days you have for them to, to scan it as accepted. And it, as long as they scan the item as accepted, you should still be covered because it was printed ahead of time. You know, everybody knows that the post office sometimes, if you don't have a good postal employee, they might not scan it. It might go back to there. They might just dump it in the building and not scan anything. And, you know, the post office may close by the time your your person's there. So they're not going to scan them, especially if it's like on a Saturday. It might not scan for an acceptance until it actually is on en route two days later. So I, I swear it's two days, but I could be wrong. I will look it up, I promise. Uh, just because I've had that question. I know they've been, I've been told that before personally by eBay because I've called them and they said as long as it's scanned in, in, in so much time. Again, I don't remember the exact time frame, but I would figure it's two days still. So anyway, I know I'm rambling again, but um, Marty, Jiminy Flippets in house. I'll have to swing by uh, and check out your next show here. I, I, terrible on any of that stuff. We, I've been helping my, my oldest. He's got a, he's getting a, a new car. He's working. He's got the money saved up now, so he's just going to be able to just go out and buy it. Um, payments, great. Not having payments. Um, and then we've got the rescue dog now. Um, Brimley is going to be her name. Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina Brimley. She's an adorable thing. I've got a couple of video clips I've posted here and there. But um, So we've been spending some time until she's comfortable with us. She was an abuse. She came in from a, a hoarder situation and... The, there's a whole bunch of other dogs and anyway she's been in this shelter for like two years and i can't leave uh, she's just adorable so anyway th we've been spending an hour to two hours every day trying to get her to be you know you know our dog so anyway you can't just grab a dog and expect them to uh, it's a lot of stress on a dog so anyway that's part of our time we've got some other things I've, my son's thank goodness i don't have anything to worry about till january um anyway there's just a lot of stuff going on it's holiday season coming up we've got relatives here in town back and forth and stuff and and we were on the road for a little while i took some time off with the loss of our dog so my 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 schedule is all over the place it's it's always like that in this this industry for most people i know i somebody might call call you tomorrow and say hey i got 20 long boxes of comics from the 60s i want them gone for you know 150 bucks or some screwball number so Anyway, that kind of stuff happens once in a blue moon. Uh, let me pop on down here. Artie Mike, hey Mike, how you doing? Good to see you in house, most definitely. Michael Sanborn, welcome, welcome. Guten Abend. Uh, yep. Artie Sales, welcome, welcome. Mr. Loftus, hey Jeff, how you doing? Hopefully things are going good down in your uh, neck of the woods here. Uh, it's Today I think it's supposed to get down to 20 here. Uh, and I heard them talking about snow for tomorrow or even tonight and in the evening. I'm on the road tonight at 11 for, for something. So hopefully it's not because I'm not going to be home till like a real screwball hour. Um, so after the show, I'm still out on the road. You do what you got to do to get your business in the direction you want it to go in. So some days you might have these awful hours. For me, that's an awful hour. I don't do that on a routine basis. So uh, Alan Thompson, how are you doing this evening? Well, I'm always glad to have someone in-house here. Always glad to have someone in-house here. Today's topic, again, if you missed it, please pop back. 99-cent items. 
Getting rid of bad feedback, great way to do it. Uh, bah, 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 bah. CJ Gordon, welcome, welcome. Black Crystal Dice, greetings back at you too. Good to see you in house. Mr. Hale, hey, hey, Bob, how you doing, Bob? Always good to see Bob in house. Um, again, uh, for those in Patreon, I did respond to everything, emails, everything. Um, as of, I think it was last night at midnight, I think I finished up, or 12.30 or something, I finished up the last comment. Um, I think I got to everybody in comments on YouTube membership too. Yeah, I did that last night too. Yeah, it's been a really hectic week, but um, I'm into the groove. We're all pretty excite, uh, psyched. Um, got the new dog coming in, so that's just been a real pleasant. Uh, Jack will have a companion. Holidays again, you know, loved ones around and everything else like that. We probably won't be doing any huge amount of push on eBay the week. We're going to relax this year and enjoy ourselves. Don't do that very often. I really wanted to take the family to see... Uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, but we weren't sure with my son on our schedule. And by the time we knew it, it was too late to get good tickets. And maybe we'll go to them in a different town. I'd love to do that every year. If you haven't, if you don't know who Trans-Siberian Orchestra is, oh my, that was the best concert I've ever been to in my life. And I've been to hundreds of concerts. Hundreds of concerts. Well, not hundreds. A lot. Hang on, where are we at here? I see some. I don't want to miss anybody. My thing is, please put this in your puppy fund. It's so much friendlier with two. Well, thank you very kindly, Stephen B. I've got a bunch. I don't know if this is all you. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. We're actually, you might see a video up here. Um, everybody who is, at, uh, you know, like usually we exchange gifts. Every All of the gifts we sent told everybody we know, don't buy us anything. It's all going to... The Seneca County Humane Society. Yeah, we gave them a, a they've got a, um, a registry and we bought them some stuff ourselves and, and dropped off stuff. That's where we got Jack from. So all of the funds, anything else we get is going to the Seneca County Humane Society. They're, I think they said they're down like $58 or something. I mean, it's really a low number and they stayed open longer for us. They, I mean, they just bent over backwards to help out with Jack and it was an hour drive one way for us and you know, we spent hours there. So, I mean, they were great. I mean, I, 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 it, Jack was a lifesaver dog wise for those who have animals and stuff, whether it was a cat or not. I've, we've had cats for years too, but thank you very kindly, Stephen. I'm, I'm, you know, feel very gracious that I have folks that feel like doing that. Again, I, I sincerely, sincerely thank you very kindly. It's all jammed it up in here. Well, thanks again. I, again, I'm, I'm kind of overwhelmed with stuff like that. Um, we're, we're animal lovers and, and, you know, I, I, I love animals. We've had dogs since our kids were little and the, the last two dogs that we lost this year, almost 15 years old. So, you know, we've been with them a long time, but they grew up with our kids. When our kids, you know, were learning to, you know, or first grade, second grade time frame, that's when we got the dogs and they've been with us ever since they went on our vacations with us everywhere we've went. Um, you know, so, so they were a part of the family. I, anybody who has, you know, animals like that. I know some people don't have kids, but they have a pair of dogs and, and, you know, that's, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you happy. That's what I say. Um, you know, some people have other choices of what animals are, whatever you like, who cares, whatever it may be. I don't, I don't have a problem with any of that. We've had fish, we've had a, a newt for years, you know, and tried to breed it. And we, we, I love animals. Well, thanks again, Stephen PB. I honestly and sincerely, sincerely appreciate that. It's going to go to Seneca County Humane Society. That's where it's going to go. So, um, again, we're getting a dog from somewhere locally here, luckily, but um, the, we check constantly on their webpage. And the first photos we ever saw of our dog, Jack, is from months before we even met him and, and stuff. They've got video of him coming into the shelter and, and then um, picture when he was adopted. There's a picture of us adopting him on their page, too. So, if you want to see us the day we got our dog, uh, it's on there. Seneca County Humane Society here in Ohio. Uh, thanks once again there, Stephen PB. I do honestly and sincerely appreciate that. Um, let me pop back on down here. Uh, thanks, Mike. Yeah, I, I did see that. I just didn't call it. I just wanted to pop into the topic at hand here. Mark, Te uh, Texas Patriot. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, it actually was. Today was a really nice, productive day. I was happy. We've been getting everything caught up. I'm, I'm literally, it's for me to be caught up. This by Thursday is really hard, so I'm really happy, and I still have some extra time. 
I'm going to be on the road picking something else up tonight. Um, something very valuable and precious comes into the house tonight. So, you know, that, that'll be nice. Um, not taking it to the office. It's coming home right off the bat. But uh, anyway, you do what you got to do. Time doesn't mean much in this industry, as most of you should know. Let me try to get down to some questions here. Hey, Don. Don right in the house. Good evening back at you. Looks like your avatar is a animal. My vision's not good enough to see what kind, but I could be wrong. Rebecca Zach Company, welcome, welcome. First time in live. Well, welcome. Hopefully you will enjoy it. Again, thank you, Stephen. I do honestly, sincerely appreciate that. Uh, Flip Cyril, Cyrilus, just wanted to give a quick thanks to all you do. Well, thank you very, very kindly on that as well. Uh, hey, Joe. How you doing, Joe? Joseph Nard, welcome, welcome. Good afternoon, I guess that could be if you're out in the uh, west, wild, wild west. Uh, Tim White, T.W. Storm, welcome, welcome. Linda Wyatt, welcome as well. Uh, Matt Jake, hey Matt Jake, how are you doing? Oh, hang on, my feed's running really slow. Sometimes they, They've added a lot of new features, and I don't know if anybody has seen it, but... We've got a whole bunch of new features that they've rolled out. I guess it's by how many subscribers you have, I guess, because I asked somebody else how to use it, and they hadn't even heard about it at all, honestly, which I was, like, really surprised. But um, I can put, like, mainstream music in my videos if they're a certain length. Oh, well, you don't, have to, you don't have to keep popping anything in there. It keeps popping up on here. I do sincerely appreciate it. Maybe it's just stuck. Hang on just a second. I'm sorry. This thing sometimes doesn't do what it's supposed to. My feed's running really awful today. I know it's not on my end. Let me just pop one down. Yeah, I think it's just jammed up on this end. Why does it keep popping up? Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the feed. The feed's really all over the place. It has like 50 super chats up all for the same thing. So I don't know what's going on with that. Let's try to get to some questions here. Um, I hate one that gets me all messed up. Skunky Thistle, interesting, Fallbrook, California. I've been out that way before. We, I've been, I spent like two months in California working for uh, Noah's, uh, Einstein Brothers Bagels. They owned a whole bunch of bagel companies back in those days, and, and their factory was in, in um, uh, what was it, Whittier, California. And I, we drove all over the place. Um, I got to bring the family whenever we traveled for Einstein. They were great to work for. Um, White Rabbit Adventures, welcome, welcome. Well, very glad to help. Uh, that's, that's the goals, or hopefully the goals. I don't help everybody, and some people get mad when I say things, but uh, I'm, I'm myself. I'm just being myself. If I can't be myself, this wouldn't be much fun. I don't like put on for a video or anything. I like to be immersed in my own, you know, world, I guess. Good idea would work for la uh, late shipping also. Yeah, it, uh, Texas Finder TN. Yeah, it works for a lot of different things. You've got to change the percentage. So you've got to increase your positive percentage. So again, one negative feed feedback could literally, depending on how much you're selling, bring you down to like 90%, even below into the 80s. Just one feedback. It's based on how many, it's based on a percentage. So if you don't have much positive feedback, one negative is like really bad. Your percentage drops down. eBay may look on it a little differently, but if I'm looking to buy something or the majority of people these days with all the scammers out there, you're looking to buy something, you don't want to buy something from somebody with like 95% feedback or 90, 92 even percent positive feedback. That's why I say it's worth even a percentage of money or something to keep your feedback good. That's why I don't mind the free returns, 30-day free returns. I don't. Nobody takes advantage of it. You know, I, I haven't had any issues that I can say. May, well, no, I don't think I was even... There's one issue, one time once, somebody bought a whole bunch of items, and, you know, one by one, and then they bought some, they wanted them a lot and all this stuff. And at the end of the day, they started opening up returns for like each one of them for some screwball, every one for a different reason. And at the end of the day, eBay just shut them down, which I was really surprised and happy because that's what the answer was. They were just screwing around. Uh, maybe it's some disgruntled viewer or something. Who knows? That's years ago now. I couldn't even tell you the date anymore. But that stuff happens even to regular people, I've heard. So, you know, people can screw you over if that's what they really want to do. 
Um, Lurking Carol, how are you doing? Good to have you in the house as well. Uh, Full-time, part-time picker. Think I can sell socks on eBay. I have four. Uh, socks are fine. The only thing I would go down and check the Vero list just to make sure that it's not a brand. There are a few higher-end brands that I don't think you can sell. Or if you could sell them, you wouldn't be able to put in the UPC because it would pull up to them. Or you couldn't put their, their name in the title, which might defeat how you could sell them. If I can't sell it on eBay, I look on Amazon next and then maybe Etsy because you can sell some items on all three sites, you know, and, and depending on, like, if, I, if I'm blocked on Amazon, it's going to go up on eBay most of the time. I got some um, My Little Ponies for Christmas. I got a whole mass of a bunch of them in a clearance sale. I got a whole bunch of all box and OS My Little Ponies, and um, I couldn't sell them. I don't remember which platform. I don't even know which platform they're on now, now I think about it. I know they're listed still, but um, we had a whole bunch of them. Some of them sold really quickly, but I, the first site I wanted to sell them, and I couldn't. You know, I needed authorization. I, that, I'm sure that was Amazon that time. You know, it's just one of those things that does happen and pop up. Um, hang on, my feed is still acting up today. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Kelly's making a comment, too, on those socks. Um, yeah, I, I do deals. I would probably lot them up. I wouldn't list anything below a certain price in the first place. So Kelly's got it right on with that. Um, RD sales. Sell, like, 10 pairs for $39.99 or $29.99. Yeah, socks are expensive. I mean, I, I, I go through socks because of my foot issue, but um, socks are expensive. They do sell fairly regularly on, on um, Amazon, for one. If you can sell them on Amazon, that would be your best bet. Around here, there's probably within, what's it, 20 minutes from the house, there's a, a smaller town, and they run, like, um, blowout sales, pallet stuff. I don't know where they get it. I never even asked them. I've been out there a few times, and we bought tons of cereal boxes, and then they've had socks. I didn't nab the socks. I didn't want to be having to store a pallet of socks or at least bring them in and then box them and then send them out FBA or something. But returns on those might kill it. Flip-flops needed. Well, thank you very kindly. Always glad to help. Yeah, Kelly's same thing. 99 cent sales to draw new customers. You might lose on that one sale, but chances are they will buy something else in your shop at a higher price. Yeah, it, it, from my personal opinion, we've done it. I'm not going to say I haven't done that in the past. I only got results if I was sell, like doing 99 cents with items that I had quantity already up in the store, collectibles mostly. If you're selling NOS and stuff like that, you might have a different result. Like if you sell t-shirts, socks would be a perfect thing you could sell along with it, or even underwear, you know, believe it or not. All that stuff sells boxers or, or briefs, whichever the case may be. But I try to keep like to like, not necessarily like same category like, but items that a person who would buy one item would be more prone to buy the other items. You're not going to put a shirt, a pair of socks, and then I don't know, a Hot Wheels car necessarily together. It's not going to be like, but underwear, socks, everybody needs them. So if, if you're doing something like that, usually you can blow them out fairly easily. You can even do a bundle, you know, of stuff too. I wouldn't say variations or anything. I'd just blow them out in a lot. You know, we bought a whole bunch. We bought a NOS soap not too long ago. Um, I think we got like 30 a piece or better for each of them. I think we paid two to five a piece. We just blew them out because I was like, you know, I got some money in right off the bat. We, I don't know, 10 x on profit or some huge number. We bought out all the stock they had. and I don't even remember the name of it, but it was some British soap. They were expensive. They smelled really nice, honestly. I think I got a video on those even. Um, Intel has definitely still done. I was doing 55, 60 months now, 20-ish. Yeah, we're running a couple tests now, so I'm not going to be able to judge my sales uh, normal and like-to-like, -like, unfortunately. But with all the pandemic, I think the like-to-like -like aspect's done. I don't think any of that's going to mean much 
in, in the next year or even this year. I can't compare to last year because pandemic's now waning and it, it, you're not, it's not apples to apples anymore. Even two years ago, you can compare everything prior to pandemic, but my numbers, I'm constantly skewing them over and, and, and stuff. I get a good idea, but it's not going to be accurate enough depending on the way the markets are going or mortgage rates are going. All that stuff varies and it, it affects your, your prices and what you're selling, believe it or not. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Yeah, it's, uh, TLCDC. I'm talking about maybe somebody's not accepting offers. Um, I guess I think I've missed stuff on here. Yeah, I'm sorry. My feed's all over the place. Let me try and... It just bounced again. Hang on just a second. YouTube's acting up tonight. Maybe I can find where we were at. Um, oh, there. okay, here we go. Dave, Midwest Pickers in house too. How you doing, Dave? Uh, Rebecca, I listed an item at great price and the platform wanted proof of authenticity. Depends on what it is. Yeah, I've heard them ask and stuff like that. I haven't been asked for anything for a, a, a ungodly amount of time, but I keep receipts for everything. I don't, I don't think there's anything that I can think of that we've bought that I didn't get a receipt of some sort. Whether eBay would accept it would be, you know, uh, the question. But all oh, they're all legal businesses with the INs at least for the most part. That's what I would judge on. If eBay isn't going to take an invoice from an EIN. Regist federally registered business, that would be pretty screwy in my book. Unless it's like a, a vero'd item or a wholesale only deal and without a wholesale license, you ain't selling it. You know, you need a wholesale for some items. I just list them on another platform again, we'd solve that problem that way. Um Hey hey Sam Dallas, how you doing, Sam? That's uh, saying I have a small eBay store, a thousand listings. You don't need to have a big store. A thousand listings for some people is a lot of listings, and you may never have to go over that amount of listings to make an un untold amount of profits from that. It's not so much the the amount of listings, I would say. It depends on what you're going for. Don't ever be discouraged if, if you think, no matter who, however many listings, two, three hundred listings. There's people out there that may have 20 or 30 listings at any given time and may make a thousand dollars a day or sell a thousand, I should say, on eBay. That's realistic, doable numbers if you've got limited quantity of stuff, as long as those items are good. NOS items in, in high demand, you may have, you know, a um, wholesale deal with somebody. You may have a distribution deal with somebody. You may have found a warehouse where you can get it really cheap and sell everyday goods like constantly. So, you know, I never worry about quantity. We're going for quantity. That's because that's our store model. You don't have to have quantity. Don't ever, ever fret if somebody says, I've only got this many listings. It's not necessarily the quantity. It's what you're selling and the quantity combined that will determine what your business is going to do. We go for quantity, so everything we do is how much can I get up? How much can I get cheap? How much can I, you know, all that? It's all by quantity. How much? It's it's massive listings. That's why, on average, we're around thirty thousand in in a given store, you know, and we're in multiple stores and in multiple platforms. Uh, quantity. I'd rather have a hundred thousand listings, uh, and it becomes passive income once it's up because I've got stuff that sells. Uh, almost on a daily basis, I might sell something that's been up for five years. Once it's up, all the work's in. Why the heck would I ever take it down? It doesn't hurt me at all. We sell stuff constantly. So once you get so much stuff, at least for us, it, well, the revenue comes in. You might be able to sell a tenth amount of items we sell, but they're higher value items, and you could be making more money than us. There's no right or wrong way. This is just what works for us. For, for Mr. Dallas there, it might, 1,000 items might get him to the numbers he wants. 300 items, 200 items, 100 items might get people what they want out of this. You know, if I'm if I'm not working as hard, I probably am not going to make as much money. We took off for Thanksgiving the week because of the loss of the, our animal and stuff, our dog. I didn't care if I lost a few bucks by not hammering everything. I sent offers out and stuff, but we didn't worry about listing new items. I didn't, if something didn't happen or we didn't, you know, the employees wanted to work, they were there welcome to come and work. We just set them up and then off we'd go so it wasn't any big ordeal but you know i just i didn't if i didn't put that much work in i'm not going to get as much money again this week different story we start slamming it and everything's right back to, to where it was so you know uh where are we at thomas klein how are you doing mr klein good to see you in house 
Uh, Kelly is saying the same thing. A thousand listings isn't that small, but yeah, I do that too. Sometimes it's less headache to just pull the item and donate them though. Yeah, you know, and the old stock, some what we do, I haven't done a auction and blown out the old items in a quite some couple of years probably before the, the pandemic. I raise the price these days. I'll I'll if it's something I photographed, I'll scan a new image and then just like raise the price. And we pretty much don't don't drop prices other than maybe fifty cents up, fifty cents down, just to try and get some action occasionally. But other than that, I don't go in and alter my prices from old listings anymore. Because I we've come to the conclusion from doing this for so long that after a while, those items might sell five years down the road for the price you want. If you want top dollar, it could take you a long time. And that's why it turns into passive income. All my labor is already gone. I've already paid for it, you know, four years ago on a five year old item. So there's literally nothing. It's just sitting there in a, in a shelf somewhere waiting to sell. So if it takes a couple extra years, who cares? I'm in this for the long run. So whether it sells now or 10 years from now, I've got something else selling today anyway. You know, said so many items, whatever the case may be, however many it is. And I don't even worry about how many items. I just look at the dollar amount. How much am I making on a daily basis of stuff from stuff selling? If it's one item and I'm making the same amount as 10 items I sold the day before, who cares? You know, seven fifty, whatever you're making, who cares? As long as you've got enough coming in and that's profit, you can project out what you're doing by the end of the month and you know, you'll be set good to go. You know, that's how I see it. I, I looked at it that way. That's I don't worry about anything else besides the dollar amount. So I, that's why a thousand listings is great. I was a thousand listings. That's I wouldn't be where I'm at if I didn't get to that point and bust it and get in there. It's gonna take you time. It took us three years to get to a point where I didn't have to worry anymore for most things, and I could have you know pay our bills and actually go to a movie once in a while or something. You know, um, Leland, how are you doing? Nice to see you, Mr. Lankford. Both of you, I guess, would be in house. Oh, lurking Cairo. Yeah, I have a small package now that hasn't been scanned in five days, so that's annoying. Hope it gets there. I have contacted USPS. On the options, usually if it's like lost or it's never been scanned, but they have an acceptance. I know they tell you not to, but there's three. If you type in on the search, I have a we have a an account with the post office. Had it for years. That's how we just renew all of our our um, pickups and stuff like that. In fact, I have to do it uh, this this next week. Um, I do it once a year for the entire year, you know, in the second or third week, I think it is. It's on my calendar, but we'll, we'll go ahead and add them all in for the whole year. But uh, if you type in lost package on the search, uh, the little search box up on the top right, on the USS or USPS.gov site, and it's going to give you the page. You click on the page, and there's three options on that page. The bottom one is like escalate. And if they haven't scanned it in, in a certain length of time, I have done that, and it usually either is gone totally or it shows right up. I have a lost package here that made it to Chicago and never left Chicago ever. And it's they've had a search on it forever. I'm, I, I've already refunded the person. They bought from us before, so I'm really not out much. You know, the 20 cents, a few cents in, in possibly fees or something. But I told them just to open up a case and we'll take care of it and end the story. You know, whenever somebody has an issue, I always tell them just go open up a case every time. That's what I always tell them. Open it up on eBay. You know, I'm fine with that. Whatever you got to do, as long as I handle it properly, it's not going to hurt me. Um, and we always take care of the customer if they open up one, you know, in one way, one way or another. Snoring Cat, that's an interesting name. Snoring Cat P, how are you doing this evening? Well, thank you very kindly. Yeah, if I, if I, if I can think about it. Um, hang on, I can actually drop a link to a video if anybody's interested in seeing Brimley. And my oldest son named him. He was devastated like I was from the loss of Jinx. And um, we told him he could name her no matter what, whatever the case may be. And what I'm going to show, this one's actually her at the rescue right now. And this is us visiting her. I'm going to drop it in there so to show at the bottom of the feed. But if anybody wants to see it, it's it's not a published video. So if you're interested, it's just our dog with a little music in the background. We showed a few other folks uh, the image, too. She is adorable, um, but she was bred to death, too. I'm uh, Not to death, but they, they overbred her. It was like a... Uh, um, 
uh, dog breeding. Th- anyway, I don't want to get there. It was just an awful experience for her as a dog. And she's a very loving dog. So again, if you want to see the dog that we're we're right in the process of trying to get comfortable with us, um, you got to go down to the link there. Only way you'll see it. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? White Ops fam to all. How are you doing? Yeah, I wouldn't suggest trading, you know, trying to sell items like that for feedback nor requesting it because that would violate eBay's rules. If somebody does it on their own, that's a different story, but I would never post that out there, personal opinion. Somebody could report it. I don't, it's none of my business. I don't know who you are, but I'm just, for safety, for your safety, I would never openly do it where eBay could find out that you asked to do that because that would be like, um, they could probably get you on like feedback and manipulation of some sort. I don't know how if you're really buying an item, but I wouldn't put it past if your intent was for people to buy it and giving away stuff just to boost your feedback. You know, if you got friends and you can email them, whatever, that's on you. I don't, none of my business, truthfully, but I would be leery on trusting eBay not to take some action on that. They're picky, just like if you send your email address and try to do business off site, that's the same basic gist, I would say. Yeah, my feed is still weird right now. I guess it's like glitched. It was the Matrix. Um, singing Mermaid Lori. Yeah, sometimes it can take years. Um, Jack's been great. Um, we were worried. We uh, we took hours in there trying to get him to be with us. But the, the uh, Brimley, if, if anybody did go down and look at that little video clip, it was like 20 seconds. Um, she's already, she sat in my oldest son's lap and was almost going to sleep. And she let us scratch her and stuff. So her tail isn't like down. She's almost to a waggy tail. And, once, and we've only been there, the wife and I have been there now three, four times, I think since we found her they were closed for two days so we're just going to keep going back it's the thing it's really close i was really surprised how close it was so it's just like a perfect situation i don't care if it takes a couple of weeks or whatever i'll be i'm fine she's an adorable dog and just how she's with the people who've been with her the last few years you can tell she's totally a lovey dog she's just how our, our jinx was and anyway i know we're kind of talking about dogs and pets but um, we're excited, I have to say. She's just adorable. She reminds me, she looks like Jinx, even in the face. Um, Jordan Klein, topic is 99 cent sales. I know we're probably behind because I've had, you know, yapping too much, but let's see if we can pop down. Um, let's see where we at. Wisconsin. I've been to Wisconsin. We, we went to the Dells. Uh, hey, Jack S. Retro, how are you doing this evening? What not show, huh? I've only done four. I haven't had, I haven't done another one since because it, for us, it just wasn't, I could, everything I sold and whatnot, I could have made a lot more money on eBay. S- some people didn't pay by the end of the show. You can't get a, re- it, it's just, I was very disappointed in the results in all honesty. Especially with the whole thing back and forth on media and the, the second item they changed. I, I just I, I was turned off by how they did it, truthfully. I'm not saying people aren't making good money out there, but... Um, I lived in the D.C. area. I figured that's what the D.C. stood for. Uh, where are we popping? Where are we hopping now? Let's see here. Yeah, Don, Trans-Siberian Orchestra. I've been to anybody who came out in the 80s and a bunch of the 90s ones. I've seen Nirvana, for crying out loud, in a small rinky-dink bar in Daytona Beach before they were on MTV even. So I, that, I've seen a lot of people. I've, I've seen Kiss in concert and even going back to old stuff. I know I've kissed Scorpions, Whitesnake many times, um, Rat, Cinderella, Britney Fox. I could go on Aerosmith. Um, that was that was not a bad show either, but nothing nothing comes even close to the show at a Trans Siberian Orchestra. That was just we had like second row and seats. It was just perfect spot, uninterrupted view. It was just it was horrendously good. I was blown away. I, I didn't expect much honestly, but man, I'd go back every year. I don't care that it, it was like five hundred dollars for our tickets for the four of us too. So they're not cheap, but it was. I I felt like I got my money's worth. It was two and a half hours of just 
really good stuff i i have to say and it was it was incredible i really liked it i know they're from sabotage the the two of the players and i've seen them when they were that here in town before transcend trans-siberian orchestra even existed so i thought it was pretty neat um deborah pollard pantonix pant antonix i'm not sure what that even is never heard of that I just like the Christmas aspect, the way they did it. I was, it was very impressive. I, I, I liked it. Yeah, I, haven't, I don't need anything. We're not shopping for anything. We just got a few things for family and friends. And then anybody else who we literally sent a notice to anybody else we've ever exchanged with is, hey, just send it to these guys, the um, Seneca County Humane Society. They, I think the wife has the the link on our Facebook. I'll have to uh, maybe share it if anybody's interested. I'll probably throw a video together um, with some clips of, of it just to show you because it, they're, they they were just wonderful. You know, they bent over backwards to help out Jack, you know, because he was, he, was um, he was returned and I mean on and on and on and on. He had a really rough life for what he was and he's very skittish these days and he's getting way better. We're working on him. I'm not in a hurry for him to be, he's great around us. Let's just say around the house, he's like the best dog. Happy and friendly. If you've seen some of my, I think he was on the last live show for just a minute. I'm surprised he hasn't run down here, but I, my guess is the wife's, you know, playing with him or something. Uh, yeah, I'll have to look up who that is. Sam Dallas, uh, Oingo Bungo at the Whiskey A Go Go. You know, I, I can't even remember. I know they've had a couple songs from the 80s, no disrespect to the group. I, I don't remember much. Um, I can't remember. They had like two songs that I did like in the 80s. Um, for me, I've seen Small Town, like Nirvana was there with some other group. Um, the ones who do Ice Planet Hell, if you know what that is. You know, it's it's a 90s song, but um, they were there unknown, and we watched them then, and I, that was pretty neat. But I mean, to... to most concerts, your ears ring. Um, Scorpions that was so loud. Um, Motley Crue was loud. I mean, it's it just it's ringing and you can't hear the words. But the 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 balance at the the Trans Siberian Orchestra concert was just like perfect. It was like they were you had your headphones on or something. It was well well done in the stage show, and the the forty foot Tesla ball on the back of the it was really neat. But anyway, I probably posted a couple clips as I took a few clips. It was just really really amazing. Uh, my Santa vintage pin necklace combo is not selling. I thought Christmas items sell, sell during the holidays. They do sell during the holidays, but we make sure to have every... I, if you didn't have it up before Christmas, we put stuff up two or three months ahead of time because people buy it ahead of time, so they have it before Christmas. That's the key to it. You can't just list it in like the month of Christmas or you know for Thanksgiving and expect the vintage oddball unique stuff to sell like that. I leave up Christmas all year round. I never worry about the season anymore. We usually have a better season, you know, of holiday items in season, but it doesn't have to be. I don't. I put the same prices on them whatever time I list them. Again, I don't have to sell today, tomorrow, or the next day. I don't care if it doesn't sell till next Christmas. Truth again, because I got stuff going up all the time. We've got thirty thousand items, so there's always, you know, I could probably just not list for months on end and still be making thousands of dollars. You know, it's just the way it works. Passive income. Um, Purple Cactus Sales, welcome, welcome. I collect vintage Xmas tree pins. I probably have a few around here. I love the Christmas stuff, truthfully. I was talking to uh, Ina at Ecommerce Bites, um, and um, she I'm not going to say what her what she was listening to, because that's not my business to say, but we were talking, and, and trans I have two or three of their soundtracks on YouTube, the whole thing, and that's sometimes one what plays, you know. I like the Christmas music. I don't. Th I didn't think it was too early this year. We've had a lot of stuff going on this year, and it was felt good and and more like homey family feeling having the Christmas music play because we play it every year. Had, you know, with us, me, the wife, and the kids and stuff, and we've even you know gotten a cottage here for Christmas here and there and done stuff like that. So, uh, I grew up with family coming to my house for Christmas, my aunts and uncles, and we'd have a big dinner at the you know the dining room table and all that kind of stuff. So. I liked it. I like all that stuff. We watched, you know, all the, you know, Santa Claus is coming to town, you know, the, the Rankin um, uh, stop motion and all that stuff, you know. Anyway, I know I'm, I know I'm rambling again, but uh, 
Linda White, I just adopted a senior dog and it has been wonderful. She adopted so well to my family. I would love to adopt uh, a senior dog, but I don't. I wouldn't want to have to go through a loss. I, I praise you for that, definitely, definitely, because I get really attached to the dogs. The family does. They're part of the family. The dogs, you know, are the ones we lost this year. Slept in one slept in one kid's bed and one slept in the other kid's bed. So they were, and, and when they didn't do that, if they were out of town, like with friends or something, or spending the night, they'd sleep in our bed or they'd sleep in the other kid's bedroom with the other dog. Or if none of us were around, they'd just cuddle up together. That's what they'd always do. So they were they were a couple, not always, but when they first got them, they they fought for long for a year or two, but. After a while, they, they loved each other. We had, she had she had puppies once, and two of them have passed, but anyway. Um, Jabroni, Choed, what's your opinion on B2B reselling, avoiding consumer goods? We got a business-to-business -business account on Amazon. I mean, I can sell and, and have sold, you know, quantity to another business at a wholesale price. I don't have any problem with it. If you don't know, you can sign up for business-to-business -business on Amazon. You've got access to that basic um it's not necessarily its own platform per se it's all kind of tied together but you have more stuff and more options using that um it do, it's b2b um amazon if you just type in that you should be able to get into it or go to the search options in your seller central um it shows up at the top like you know right below that it just i have a little button i can just click on where we've got you know kdp i've got like five other things were on homemade by Amazon and a couple other things and, and you can just click instantly and change where you're at on, on Amazon if, if you're unaware most people just have a just the regular Amazon but we have business Amazon and all that stuff too B2B it's literally your business to another business and there's nothing wrong with that at all some of the artwork I do goes straight to a business it never goes to an individual customer's hands because I can just sell them all at once, make my money. Who cares if they make set amount of profit or they double their money? I don't care. I don't have to sell them one by one usually. And it it's, equates to usually more than if I was, we print postcards. So if I print 100 postcards, I can sell 10 of them in, in you know, 10x my money almost, depending on the quality and quantity I'm ordering. Again, usually 100 is what I order. Um, or I can just print them for a local establishment many times it may be a 500 or a thousand count they use it for an advertisement they'll mail them out whatever they'll do to them but i'm making you know maybe a third of the money but i'm making it all at once and there's no way i would sell 500 of some designs of cards so, or a thousand for sure and you know I'm, I'm making all my profit right off the bat it's it's a done deal you got to take all that kind of thing into consideration with whatever you do so business to business it's usually stuff that I'm not going to do one-offs or things like that, you know, I, or I don't want to. I, I guaranteed I'm going to make, you know, 200%, 300% profit on an immediate one instead of maybe making a 1,000% profit or something. If I sat there and one by one by one or something. With some of the postcards, there's people that will buy like 15 or 20 of them for me and then I'll take them to a show and they'll sell them there. I don't care what they do with them. I get my money and I'm done. People say, oh, I'm not, I don't want some dealer coming in and buying off me and making profit. I mean, I don't care. As long as I get what I want out of them, what do I care? They come back. You know, one of the guys who writes the book and one of the, the niches I sell and buys from me. He's, he's one I've followed for a very long time. I follow what he does because he's usually ahead of the game, at least with like zoom-ins and stuff. I'm sure that what I just said, there's going to be a couple people who have followed me and we've talked with who know exactly who I'm talking about well-known person um the cobra chicken aak canadian or uh, canada goose thomas klein i'm wondering if you are still ending and selling similar i'll do that again on sunday we're running a test there's a few people i've been back and forth on the test because somebody else i know on, on here in my patron group is running the same test and I've got like three friends here locally who are running the same basic test that I'm running. I'm not going to shoot out what it is. Those and a couple of people on pa Patreon know and if there's any somebody who's interesting I'll tell you if you're in my Patreon group but um, I, I want to know everything that's working or not working on eBay and we've running a lot of tests. This one's running for 30 days. It's been running for what? Um, three days? Four days? The results so far are really scary but um, and not in a good way so 
you don't know if something works until you try it. And I don't care if somebody else says it always works. If I, I'm going to test it first. If it doesn't work, I'm not going to use it. I don't care what anybody else says. What works for one seller not necessarily won't work for another uh, reseller. End of story. That's how it works. I know I'm terrible on this, but if you're enjoying the conversation, please slam that thumbs up. I have 172 people in the house, 84 thumbs up. Really like to get to 100 before the show is done. Uh, uh, hang on, I'm missing a question here. Let me see. Where did that go? Yeah, I still do end and sell similar. Uh, that's what Kelly's answering on here, too. I was just trying to see if I missed a question or something. Um, when you end and sell similar, we're, we were trying them three times a week or three times a month, their entire store, because I can list 100,000 items for the same amount as me listing 30,000. So I can afford to do it because of the zips, the new add-ons. I couldn't have done it before when I was paying five cents extra per listing when I was just a standard anchor store without the zips and all that stuff. The the managed payments saved us like $1,500 a month or something just in one store. And we didn't, we don't technically have to run multiple stores now to say, to have the same amount. So anyway, so we would flip them all and we tried it for a month and a half or so. Two other people I were talking to, including a, a patron, we were, we've been going back. I talked quite extensively with this, with two or three people just about this they have quantity and they've been in it for a long time i've been talking to them for quite a few years and patreon and anyway so we've we've done all the tests and, and running it a lot of times they're too new to work on some items and and if you keep doing them what what happens and again this is from actual running tests like to like items ten thousand that we did it with with ten thousand that we didn't you know in different stores across several different seller sellers with you know basically all 100 percent positive feedback and stuff so there shouldn't have been any discrepancies they're all the same items and the results were the same for all the stores mine included in that group so you know i, I have to judge it by what the results say so you can't do it too quick if you do end and sell similar too often they, they don't have time to be old to, to be pushed back they just don't have interest maybe but if you wait a little longer the 30 days the maybe 37 ish so basically five weeks ish after that point you're going to get a little more boost in doing them more often so your your efforts would be better spent to run and or to run sales and markdowns if that is the ploy that you're doing again you have to have your prices set a certain way when you first list them to be able to do like a markdown at 30% and then still do best offer and still make a decent profit even with doing those markdowns it's perceived value it's corporate corporate I guess is what they do. It's basically the perceived value aspect of it and marketing ploys and, you know, just like targeted marketing and stuff. If you're, if you, if you do Amazon and you're doing any of the, their promoted on there, you're targeting and you're being very specific on what you're looking for and where you tag the, anyway, I'm, I'm not going to go into details on that because I'm sure a lot of people aren't into that, but um, promoted listings work in many cases, depending on what you sell. But I sell, uh, you know, give or take mm, bagel yeah i don't mind bagels um at the time uh, einstein brothers was making all of mcdonald's bagels the bagels that they got in the morning for whatever they were selling i don't i don't i haven't been in mcdonald's in years but um back then einstein brothers made the bagels in two factories these massive factories i got to see them before so they were huge um bagel and bagel they owned noah's which is gus uh, cali uh, a company out of Whittier and then um, they bought maybe it was Chesapeake they owned Einstein when I worked for them was the biggest bagel company in the world at that time I don't know what they are anymore but that's been 15 years at least maybe maybe a little longer ago uh, yeah Marty's going on with that too yeah it, it is a lot of people do the end and sell similar so that defeats it somewhat but you you got to realize that they're not selling the same things as you. So them having issues with it doesn't mean you necessarily are going to have issues with it. We're going in the 30 to 37 uh, day range. No more than, say, 38 days. I don't want to let them go where we're not flipping the items, all of them, end of summer. But I'm no way going to do them all the time. But we do run 
three-day sales. Again, we're testing some several different things with you know 10,000 listings or 8,000 listings, depending on the store, against multiple baseline you know, like to like items. I'll break it all down when we when we come up with the results, at least in Patreon and, and, and such forth, just so others can can see and then come to their conclusions too. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Yeah, Marty, as I said, was saying that your items will get buried after thirty eight days or so. Again, I, I've we've run that test with a whole bunch of other people. It's not just my results. This is from a bunch of people. I I don't trust that they don't treat different sites or different uh, sellers differently. I, I, f I feel like there could be some favoritism at some point or you know this or know that and they might look the other way in some cases. I've, I've, there's too many people have shown me messages and things and I just have to wonder. I, so if you're not comparing them in these days, in my mind, a couple of different stores together with like to like, you know, good feedback all around, same basic shipping policies, basically the same kinds of niche items as well and some of the two of the stores actually sell cards and stuff like i do as well so there, there's a real good chance that the results would be the same as long as ebay's not offering preferential treatment to somebody or something i get people say well they're treating you differently because you do youtube i don't think so i've i've spoken my my mind on what i think of ebay and some of the people there are very 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 plainly and i don't I've turned them down any time they've ever asked to have somebody on my show or something else like that. I, I, what's that? There's a girl that used to be there. She's not quit, but they've hit me up quite a few times, and so has a couple other. I, I won't have anybody from eBay on my channel or Amazon or any of those, truthfully, but I've had somebody on from Hip because he's actually a real guy. But um, Mr. Dees, how you doing? Pat Dees in the house. Good evening as well. Hopefully things are going good on your end. Um, snoring cat, the goose wren, my local park. They have been known to stop traffic for a while. Yeah, there's geese all over here. I was I was heading out there to drop my son off uh, the other day, and there was a flock of geese like I've never seen out in the. There's fields all over out there. There's not much out where where that place is at, and sometimes there's a flock of hundreds of them in the sky around here because they're you know north and traveling south for the winter and stuff. Geese, yes. Uh, let's pop on down here. Oops, my feet again. Uh, I'm not happy with the feed tonight, but I'm sure hopefully it'll at least stay the way it is. Uh, snoring cat, I just sold to Brazil for the first time. I'm a bit nervous, but it has tracking. The only thing I worry about, like Brazil, Argentina, and stuff, I have we've bought from Argentina. That we we buy weebles from a. Uh, antique toy dealer from Argentina quite often actually in fact I just got one in the other day um, if you collect and you like niches we I like the imports more too because we, my wife has all of the US but like a couple box versions is all we're looking for and that's it there's still the all black weeble will pay I'd probably pay 75 bucks if somebody turns up a real vintage Hasbro two inch all black weeble um, anyway, it's just solid plastic black weevil, but that's that's the only other one we're looking for. So we buy imports. Argentina and some of those countries are hit and miss going into them. Coming out of them, I haven't had any issues. We had one that was stuck in customs, not due to them, but it was stuck in customs for like three weeks. Because, I, I don't remember, but the, the word, the Spanish word they wrote on there, I, I think they translated it wrong or they, I don't know. But anyway, it was stuck. I got it. It was fine wasn't damaged they took very good care of shipping it i did have one item from uh, south america damaged not too long ago but you, you take take the good you take the bad and you take them both and there you have of course the facts of life there i message a seller uh, two times made an offer message again why do sellers not respond in your options if it's a real low ball offer, I, I, I used to counter back with a real high one. I, I will have to say in some cases if I've got like a hundred and fifty dollars on the item and they offer me five bucks, I'm just gonna I'm gonna just not even accept it. Sometimes if, if I'm on the road, I only accept offers from either a certain phone or from, you know, laptops and stuff. I don't like accepting them unless it's on my phone because I got all my security features on it too, but I don't like doing it out in public very often either though. Um Sam Dallas, I end in South Summer with 10 items a day, every day, and adjust the title, price, lead photo. 
Yeah, see, I, I used to do them on a more frequent basis, as I was saying, but I don't like to... If I do it during during certain times, I actually have sales going on almost 24-7, and, and I don't like to run a sale while I'm ending and selling similar because in, in several occasions, I know it doesn't always happen, but in sometimes the sale price turned into the new price when I ended and sold similar. And so I, I've never trusted the, that to be done. And, and eBay has told me you should wait till they end and, and then do it. So at this point, I wouldn't want to run it. And just like if I want to start we run four uh, sales and markdowns at the very same time. They each cover certain aspects. They're all each a little different. They, they have a bottom end that might be different, a top end that might be different, or some maybe high dollar items and then mid dollar items. So we've got four of them that I run on a, a constant basis. I was told, and I found the hard way to never start to, to I used to just try to start a couple of them, but they, they always interact. Even if you put do not include new or items missed or skipped or anything else like that, or even if you do click lock in, the bottom uh, 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 radio button, there's two at the top when you first get in, the, the lower ones um, basically locking what's in that sale into that sale. They still have an issue when you run two of those at the same time, especially if we run them for 10000 at a time sometimes and, <clears throat> because we, we can afford to do that in those. And they'll crisscross, and the sale won't be for 10000 It may only end up, you know, after it's done and it's active, may only have 3200 The other one may only have 5000 or whatever, so I'm missing what 13,000 or so listings out of what I wanted to run and you have to anyway don't I don't even run two of the the sales and markdowns at the same time I wait till one's finished and then I start another one processing and I'll hit the copy button I created them once the only thing I ever have to do from there is change maybe the percentage so if sales are coming in I lower the discount rate if sales aren't coming in I raise it up to a certain point and then go from there but I try not to do any of that on a daily basis. This time of year, usually in Christmas time, I run sales three days, and I try to, uh, two days I'll run in the middle of the week once. My goal is to have the sale end on a Sunday now if I run it. So I run it three days, and it would start on Friday or what, Thursday to Friday, Friday to Saturday. So was, today we started one. Um, again, I guess the wife would have done it. but So those are done. It's marked off. I know it was done. I don't know who did it, but it was marked off. So, again, they end on Sunday. That's the best day. It makes it seem like it's urgent. Ending soon. Uh, sales almost over. Don't miss your chance. All that kind of stuff. So Sundays, I'm still having more sales over the weekends than any other time. Monday's still a pretty darn good day, too, luckily. As is Friday. Most of the days are about the same. Again, volume helps. Uh, let's see where we at. Where we at? I seem to be selling a ton of international with a new shipping. I've blocked off all but I think eleven countries total. I think I don't. I think we've blocked off. I know we did blocked off Germany. I don't do Italy anymore because of the massive issues. I did add China to my list, and I haven't had any issues with any of the ones going to China. Not only that, I get the scans too. So I ship to China these days, and I haven't had any issues. Um, Japan's a real good place to ship if you're vintage paper and die cuts and Victorian. They eat them up over there, as do vintage some of the buttons. I get a lot of Japanese buyers for buttons. Um, stuff like that does extremely well for us. I don't know everybody else's. Um, China photos, posters, luggage labels, letterheads, any of that stuff goes to China nowadays. And offering a direct ship to China has been great. As long as, again, it's it's covered and I, I won't ship it you know, any cheap way. Um, yeah, I think my, my feed is off again. It just... It just bounced. So I don't know if I'm in the right spot anymore. Hang on, I think I'm getting close. Yeah, The Matrix. There we go again. White Rabbit Adventures. Yeah, one thing too, if, if like for um, offers to watchers, if you don't send them out when the, you have the ability to do it, Somebody else could send them one, and then they you won't be able to send yours out. So, like, sometimes you'll see it says um, you have the option to send them to five eBay uh, potential buyers when you're sending out offers to watchers. It may come back and say it's sent to two. Well, those other three people may have already got offers from other people. There's only a limit. There's They only can get so many each person out there. And if other people bombed it before you, you've just lost your chance. So we do it all day long, you know, whenever possible. I don't mind doing that from a phone either, but... 
So somebody is always doing it. There's always a window on every one, two, there's four open right now. And I guarantee you, anyone I walk to is going to have that option open. I'll have the, the items listings uh, tab opened up in the hub, and it'll be right there with the actual um, uh, available to send offers to watchers option clicked. And then it's just got to reload the page. And instantly, boom, send them out mass quantity, and then we're done. Don, if, if stuff like that, if it was broken when it got back to you, I would refund them and then open up a case and challenge it with eBay. That's going to be a hard one on something like that to 100% proof because the weight will be right and all that kind of stuff. They are supposed to return it to you in the same state that it was sent to them. The only thing eBay would allow you to do without you know, opening up a follow-up case would be to give them only half their money back. You could keep the original shipping and only give them half their money back. Um, other than that, you would have to refund them and then come back in. Now, if, if you are 30-day free returns and all that stuff like we are, and you only give them half their money back, even if they're mad about it and open up another case, I never hear another word about it because eBay handles it from there because I fulfilled my obligation stated in the user agreement by giving them the refund. So they can't leave negative feedback either because I gave them the refund within the time frame, which is the policy. I don't have to give them the full full price back if they've damaged it or something else like that. But again, if they totally trash it, there's no way you can sell it. You'd have to refund them in, and then open up a case. That's what eBay has told me every time because if you let the case sit there and don't do it, then they can leave feedback and ding you as well. And some of that's harder to get removed from, from my personal experience. As long as you follow the rules and keep at eBay, I, I've been very lucky with all that kind of stuff. Um, we try to do the right thing. Mistakes happen, though. So, you know, I could get a feedback tomorrow, bad feedback that I can't get removed. It happens. Um, Vintage Vanya, welcome. Good evening. The Purple Hand of Fate. Sam Dallas, I'm at a steady 6K uh, net per month for five years now as a semi-retired. Ham radio gear is the main stuff I chase. Nothing wrong with that. Again, it depends on what you want out of it. You know, there's people who just want a couple thousand dollars extra a month, and that's fine with them. You know, I used to do it on the weekend when I worked full time, and we just listed on our evenings after I got back. I worked 60 hours a week, and any time I had free... My wife and I used to love going to thrift stores when we didn't have kids, and, and that's what we did a lot of. And inevitably, we'd make you know some extra money on the weekends, fifteen hundred, two thousand in a weekend. Sometimes we'd run three sales a month, and then we'd take off one week, one weekend. I usually work six days, but you know that's you do what you got to do. It's even PB one thousand listings is ginormous. So you get it depends on what what level where you're at. And there's nothing wrong with having less or more or anything else like that. Everybody has it has a, a, a spot. Milestone is a thousand, like Jackass Retro saying there. We our stuff started to change when we hit ten thousand listings. Um, these days it's different. I don't know if ten thousand would give you the exact same results these days as it would have, you know, years back. I, I can tell you without a doubt. I would almost guarantee you. We'd be a multi-millionaire if I started reselling 30 years ago when we first thought you could have started doing that. But I never thought it was possible. I'm, obviously, things happen. We've sold over a million on eBay, but not profit for sure. So, um, Where are we at? Where are we at? Um, hang on. Raheel Chi. Uh, no way to help you on, on stuff like that. You'd have to, I mean, it depends on what you have up. It depends on your quality. Raheel, it depends on all those aspects, you know. It's, there's just too many aspects. And five items might be good, depending on what you have listed, so. Um... Yeah, my uh, we have I have you know goals. I would always set yourself a goal: five thousand listings in, in a year, five thousand listings in two years, whatever it, whatever your goal is. If you don't hit it, you know you keep working towards it. If you hit it, you make another goal. You know I think goals are a, a good. I mean that helps drive up 
you know, like your, I don't know, your, I think it's a boost, especially if you hit it. It's like a challenge. It's kind of like, um, I take the business as a challenge. Like it's almost like a game. And my, my goal is to win the game, you know, to, to get to the next level, to level up if, if that would be the case. Get so many listings up. It's expand your business so much. You know, I have a vision of where we want to take this, and that's 100,000 listings. That's what I would like to be at some point. Um, I've got goals that tie along with that, the 100,000 listings or whatever the case may be. You know, whatever it is, I think that's good. A vision and goals for where you want to be with your business is going to help you get to anywhere you want to go. I, there's just no other way around it. So the way it's worked for me for years. We hit a goal. I always have another one right behind it. I already had it in my head before I ever hit this goal. You know, what happens if I hit the goal? I, I've i already figured out what the next one or two goals is. I have a five-year plan, you know, and if I can get to that five-year plan in four years, I'll be much happier, you know. And there goes my feet again. I wish it wasn't because I was going to answer to one here. Hang on if I can find it. Yeah, I think my feed's totally gone now. Um, hang on, where are we at? Where are we at? Yeah, I'm, I'll just pop in right here. I don't know where we're at in the feed, but Sam Dallas, if it doesn't sell, it's because people don't want it. Change inventory, fix the listing problems. Don't mean to be blunt, but it's the truth. <clears throat> That's 100% the truth. Bad photos. When I, every time I, I look at a store, almost every time, if I'm trying to point out something, I usually give out half a dozen title changes to, to a store just to give them an idea in which direction to go to. The majority of the time when they make a change, they've sold one of those items very quickly. Even when I do changes, I, I, there was a coffee, mug, or a coffee mug we've had for a year. It was up for a year or something like that. And it had some weird dog. I don't know what kind of dog it was. And somebody, it was some real weird mountain, alpine, I, I, I couldn't even tell you the name of it. The wife might be able to remember. But, and uh, somebody out there said, hey, that's a such and such. If you put that in the title, I bet you it would sell really quick. Because everybody who's into those dogs, and it's a very small group, is dying for anything. And sure enough, I put it in there, and I think it was sold like the next day for top. I think I even raised the price based on what that guy said emailed me on ebay in fact I, I don't know where which is fine i do that sometimes and help other people out just i don't know who they are i just hey you got this misidentified go ahead and put that in there i bet you'd do better but most of the time a simple word change in a title can get something sold even just the order of that title can get something sold because if, if you're looking from a phone and in some categories the amount of people looking from a phone may be 40 percent 42 43 percent i've even seen some reports and if it's not like to the left of the title it's going to be cut off, and most people don't scroll. They're just zip, 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 and, and you're done, you know, and you miss stuff that way. So if, if the, the, just the, the spot in your title where you have it is, is important, and even with, like, a Google search results and stuff, that helps out a lot. Well, talking about Google, this will be the last thing, and we're going to end it off on here, but if, if you end and sell similar every 10 days or so, on, or even if you're doing it, like, in a daily, none of those listings are going to have time to show up on a Google search at all. So you, you're sacrificing off-platform a little bit to try and hit the platform is what I would say. And I, I've tried it. I'm not going to say there's, not, there's anything technically wrong wrong with that. But if you wait to that 37-day time frame, you've got a better chance than at least for a week or two of them showing up on, on Google results where they can get to you. That would be my take. Or at least they'll show up on Google. Maybe the link will be dead because you did end and sell similar. But you'll get to they'll get to see who you are your name will still show up in that search result even if it's not a, a active link anymore because you ended and sold similar and created a new listing and we've tried and looked at everything I lo i've looked at every um anal retentive on numbers and stuff and, and data statistics on that i've looked at all that stuff you know I've, i go to google trends i've shown some other sites that you can get the free basics you can get bounce rate and all that kind of stuff from site differences and stuff i've looked at all that stuff i've looked at the google search results you name it if, if it's available data i've looked at it at least for our items and what sells and all that kind of crap so it, again just me this is what i do for a living if you do this for a living and nothing else i would recommend you've done the same thing i would hope too so you understand you know keywords that are hot you know when a movie comes out, there's a lot of good keywords if you've got stuff tied to that movie every time. 
Avatar, I personally could care less about, but you know, if, if you get Avatar items, it would be a good time to start pushing them because you've got built-in free advertising from the movie right now. So you've got Avatar items from the original Avatar, action figures, whatever you may have. Now's the time to put them out there. And that works with anything, you know. A good, I don't, I'm not a big superhero movie anymore at all. I still, I'm the old school. I still like the Dark Knight trilogy and stuff. And <clears throat> the Joker, the new Joker wasn't too bad. But uh, Suicide Squad, I haven't seen any of that stuff. I haven't seen any new, new Marvel movie. We did watch, um, I couldn't even tell you now. I don't, I can't remember the name of it. Cumberbund played the, the character. I don't know. I couldn't tell you the name of the movie. It's been a few years now. That might have, I mean, that might have been five years. But whenever those come out, though, I pay attention because if I've got the toys, X Men, um, you know, action figures or something, um, NOS or Min MOC, Mint on Card or something, they're they're going up. You know, when the new Tron movie came up, we sold all of our Tron, our old Tron stuff, right off the bat. It was it was a no no brainer on there. If something's coming out, you, you put stuff out that you got tied to it prior movie like terminator stuff we told we sold all of our terminator salvation uh, items all we had all the action figures we got them on clearance for like 99 cents a piece I, I think the cheapest we sold any of them uh, for was like 24.99 for just the junko ones made a lot of money but you know um the next movie came out so when we sold them you know so anyway i'm gonna let it go off that i know i'm kind of rambling now i do appreciate everybody coming on in house Uh, somebody's asking, comment on I'm forwarding employees. If I'm, I don't know if you're talking about my store or not. I we list on more than one platform. I list on more than one site. I have more than one eBay store. Um, you know, it doesn't take much to be able to afford when you can list 40 items an hour. You're it's 50 cents. It costs me 50 cents to pay somebody to do a listing, at least the paper and all the stuff. And I don't list in well, those are buttons, so it's even less for paper. So 30 cents. So anyway, if, if the question is referring to that, a lot of people may say you may not need employees to your 100,000. Well, how are you going to get to 100,000 in a quick time without employees? You know, employees are much cheaper than you would think. If you pay $15 an hour for an employee, they're listing 40 items an hour. They've got an eight-hour shift. It's over 200 items up. You're selling 3 to 5% of that. You've got a 90% a, a profit margin, 10% COGS out of the item because, you know, we we get discounts. I just did a video on COGS, so that I just talked about that, but it's not very hard at all because in, in one item can sell, you might pay for all of the items listed in the one hour and the labor for that that hour. And that's, that's what we've got. Because if somebody lists 40 items, chances are a couple of those are going to sell half the time, more than half the time. If somebody lists something, they've already sold something before the shift is even done. So anyway, I'm going to let go at that. Hopefully everybody is doing well. Hopefully, again, we're still listing. It's still that time of year. Stuff is still happening. Sales are still coming out. So don't give up. Things will change around. In my opinion, after the holidays, we'll be back to a, a more normal standard. Mortgage rates are coming down. Stock market's not doing so bad. Unemployment rate has dropped drastically. Gas prices are down. I just saw for three twenty-five today, and that's without my Kroger discount. I paid with the Kroger discount the other day, two ninety-two. I want to say. I don't get gas that much, so anyway, I'll let y'all go. I do appreciate you coming on. I have new videos coming up tomorrow, and I hope y'all have a good evening.